Yo guys, Punk Rat with another video. This one's gonna give you a couple interesting tricks for making gold on a freshly launched vanilla server so that you can get your mount relatively quickly while leveling up. The absolute first thing you want to do on a fresh character is get two gathering professions. I'd suggest mining or herbalism and skinning or mining and herbalism. As you level up, you need to focus on gathering and farming in general. Otherwise, you'll be running on foot to level 60 basically, which will lower your leveling speed to max and also set you back in terms of travel time in general at max level. You need about 100 gold at level 40 for your first basic riding skill and basic riding mount. 100 gold is a lot in vanilla standards, especially on a fresh server. So you'll need a couple tricks in order to attain this amount of gold quickly. That notion is important. The fact that gold is so scarce on a new server during launch, this concept can be taken advantage of. Things are cheap. When a server first launches, Mats and items sell for really cheap in comparison to their real value on a thriving vanilla market. One thing I have done on pretty much every single private server launch that I've played on is buy items that I know are in deep demand during launch for super cheap and hold on to them as investments to sell months later. A great example of this is Shadowblade from SFK. When the server first launches, there's going to be thousands of people playing in the same level range. On private servers, Massive launches like Nostalrius, Warming, TBC, etc. have had a 10k player base cap. So this is a huge factor for this gold making strategy. The original player cap on vanilla servers back in 2005 was 2500 if I'm not mistaken. But Blizzard has stated that this player cap was almost entirely a decision based on server capability at the time. 2500 players is definitely too little for a thriving server in my, in my opinion. And my hunch tells me that they'll increase it to something more like 5,000. Maybe even a bit higher. If this is the case, there's going to be a ridiculous amount of people running level 20 dungeons for the first couple of weeks of launch. This is, opens up a pretty unique situation to make a nice long term investment. With thousands of people running Shadowfang Keep every single day, there will be tons of twink items dropping, more than you will ever see again. On Warmain TBC, which had a 10k player cap, as stated before, there was like 4 to 5 pages of Shadowfangs and Assassin's Blades selling at 10 gold a pop. I bought 7 Shadow Fangs, 7 uh, Assassin's Blades for 10 gold each, and sold them for 250 gold to 700 gold a pop a couple months later when the frenzy died down and these items were almost non-existent. This concept does not only apply to Twink items from SFK, but it applies to mats and green items with specific stats as well, like Nature Resist Gear, Frost Resist Gear, and Fire Resist Gear. These items provide the same type of opportunity. When scanning the auction house, always look for good deals early on in the server launch. You'll be thankful in the end. In general, one of the most lucrative ways to make gold in World of Warcraft has always been and always will be playing the markets. If you have good intuition, the right personality for taking risks, and a keen understanding of economics and trading, buying and selling is the way to make money. With add-ons like Auctioneer, I believe it's called AUX, Aux in, um, in vanilla, you can make all the money you need sitting in a main city on a level 1 and controlling the markets. So another really interesting way to farm gold that's pretty low effort is farming specific areas or specific node spawns of Black Lotus. So Black Lotus, this is a extremely lucrative um, herb to farm, especially during the early days of vanilla. Every flask needs one of these to be crafted. With tons of guilds progressing raids in the early days, that's 40 people per raiding guild who want a flask. Most of those people won't get one. Black Lotus spawns are really limited in respect to the demand for this herb which means they're probably going to be selling at 25 gold to 100 gold a pop, depending on server population. On the early days of Nostalrius, these herbs were selling at 100 gold a pop. I know there's going to be tons of you in the comments saying, Haha, private server noob, Blizzard servers won't even be close to private servers, private servers got everything wrong. Okay, anyhow, these are going to sell for a ton, and will be in limited supply. In certain spots around the world, there's areas where three to four black lotus spawn within a small vicinity, basically right next to each other. If you're ever lucky to encounter one of these spots, there's gold to be made. The best part about landing on one of these golden opportunities to herb is that you know the time that you pick them up at. Again, on most private servers that I've played on, the herb respawn rate has been about 40, 45 to 50 minutes. It's never consistent, it's on a little timer that fluctuates a bit, but it's generally around that time. So you come 10 minutes early and you can secure that spot for yourself again. If you have a timer, you can revisit this location over and over again, picking up uh, you know, a little group of Lotus on a time interval, netting tons of gold for yourself. While leveling up, 
Questing is generally the fastest way to level for most classes, amid Frost Mage of course, but a lot of the time, mob grinding can be quite fast in comparison. It's way more tedious, but relatively similar in terms of time played. With that being said, if you have skinning, there's certain spots that you can mob grind for a couple levels spam skinning and vendoring the leather while having a chance at certain crafting mats and rare drops which can make you a ton of gold you know, as you level and straight out of the game system itself rather than relying on selling it to other people and relying on, I guess, the economy. The reason you should vendor the leather is connected to the same concept that I said earlier. There's going to be thousands of people leveling with skinning and all trying to sell their leather, completely saturating the market. This will drop the prices of leather to most likely below the vendor value or uh, um, I guess relatively similar but after the auction house cut basically netting you less gold. So a lot of the time you just want to stack mass leather in your inventory and vendor it. Here are a couple spots where you can farm whelps to drop flame sacks. Flame sacks are used in a couple alchemy recipes as well as other crafted items while having a chance at a BOE whelp pet which will sell really really well in the auction house. You could alternatively hold on to the well pet and wait for inflation to kick in a little bit before you sell it but it's really up to you so here are the relevant well spots swap of soros here at the bottom where the lake is you could basically run around the lake in circles killing all the whelps and all the cats i'd suggest doing this for a couple levels if possible but there's a high probability of this place being jam-packed during launch because most people are aware of this spot and other youtubers have made uh similar videos talking about this and uh there's another whelp spot here in badlands uh, tucked away behind the little rocky area over here on the right. There's a corner which has a nice little spot with tons of whelps uh, and in Badlands there's pretty much cats everywhere so when the whelps are all dead you can just go around killing cats because there's tons of them in the zone in general. Cats, hyenas, and mobs like this are also great for mob grinding. These mobs tend to drop items like soft patch of fur and other greys like teeth and stuff like that which have great cumulative value when stacked up. You could stack up a stack of 20 and sometimes sell them for like 80 silver or maybe a gold depending on the level range. Farming large amounts of these great items can end up yielding a good amount of gold straight out of the actual game system itself while leveling up. Not to mention, Wicked Claws have good sellability considering it's used for Lionheart Helm which requires 40 of them and it's the best in slot Fury Helm for the entirety of vanilla. Even in Nax, it's by far the best Warrior DPS helmet. So, Doing this strategy and just killing cats in general, sometimes you can net from anywhere from like 30 to 50 gold per level mob grinding, which is pretty significant. You're talking about in two levels having enough gold uh, basically to buy your first mount, which is great. While farming cats and other leather yielding creatures, you should definitely be letting cooking alongside it. A lot of the time, if you do the math, you could turn some of the cheaper meats that drop from these mobs into food that can sell for up to 60 silver a stack at higher level ranges. This profession is super important for raiding as well. In all hardcore raiding guilds, food buffs are an absolute necessity. In fact, before every pull, the raid leader is there like, alright, get your food buffs up. There's a huge demand for food buffs, so you'll be selling a ton of it at level 60. I'd also suggest getting fishing as well. Fish are extremely lucrative in vanilla and are some of the most important mats when it comes to alchemy recipes. Stone scale eels and firefin snappers specifically are probably the most lucrative fish, but other fish have great trade value as well. Another great spot to mob farm while leveling up is in Stranglethorn Vale, the Shredders specifically. These guys drop an item called Fused Wiring at a 9% drop rate, which has great value on the auction house since it's used in a couple patterns like Field Repair Bot, uh, Goblin Jumper Cables, and a couple others. You'll also kill a bunch of goblins in this area as you're doing this, which drop venerable grey items and cloth and pages of Stranglethorn, which can be sold for people who are leveling up and trying to complete the pages quest. You'll be leveling up making gold and selling them pages, while they'll be leveling up spending gold on your pages. It's genius. If you plan on going mining and engineering right off the bat, there's a really interesting farm that will get you your basic riding mount in no time. In fact, it might even be the best leveling gold grind on this video, specifically because it doesn't rely on farm spots or over farm spots, I guess. Iron grenades are made with one iron bar, one heavy blasting powder, and one silk cloth. Each craft can yield up to two to four grenades, depending on the proc. So that's 10 to 20 silver per craft sold to a vendor. You could run around Arathi Highlands for as long as you're in that level range, farming the tits out of iron and silk. This method is 100% guaranteed to get you your basic riding mount without issue by level 40. In fact, I've heard anecdotes of people getting to 60 with the ability to buy their epic riding fresh at level 60 with this method. A really important thing to consider while leveling up is that food and drink is super expensive, and you can end up spending tons of gold as you level up. If you always spend your hard earned gold on food and drink, you'll end up sinking easily 20 plus gold from level 1 to 60, maybe even more. This isn't really about making gold, it's more about not spending your hard-earned gold. 
So do your best to find a mage who will conjure you some food and drink for cheap or give it to you for free. Once level 35, food is about 18 silver per five from the vendor, meaning every two stacks will cost you about a gold and a half. This really adds up and attacks your wallet big time. Alternative to this, if you're a mage, spend time in a main city selling food and portals. This is actually a great way to make money in the early days as people are constantly looking to cut their travel time and save money on food. You can sit in the middle of Stormwind spamming a macro selling food and portals and you'll have customers all day. It's actually a great way in the early days to make gold. Similar to this, make sure you don't spend gold on every skill of the skill trainer while leveling up. Only buy the skills that are relevant to your leveling process rather than upgrading every single ability. For example, as a hunter, a lot of the times you just auto shot without wasting too much mana on spells in order to not pull aggro off your pet so you can keep killing mobs without drinking and going at a decent pace and also without having to eat too much since your pet is tanking every single mob. In this case, you can skip a bunch of useless heavy mana cost shots and also just the useless spells in general, basically only using Serpent Sting, Arcane Shot a bit, and Hunter's Mark. Another tip for making gold in relation to controlling markets is taking advantage of vendored recipes. While leveling up, there's NPCs around the world that sell specific recipes. The ones that are available for purchase without any restriction, you want to just buy them and sell them on the auction house for a small little profit. The most high tier example of this is in Moonglade. Lorelei Wintersong is a vendor that sells uh, two super high demand recipes for enchanters. One is Formula Enchant Cloak Superior Defense, and the other is Formula uh, Ruined Arcanite Rod. You can buy these for about 2 gold a pop and sell them for upwards of 10 gold easily. The other strategy for taking advantage of vendored recipes is more catered to making gold at max level, but if you have the time and willpower to farm reputations to Exalted or whatever reputation is needed for a specific recipe, you can get access to very rare recipes that you could potentially be the only person on the server or one of the only people on the server to have that recipe, meaning you more or less dictate the price to sell it at. For example, Thorium Brotherhood gives you access to fire resist recipes, which are super high demand in the early days considering everyone's um, running through Molten Core where their tanks are going to need it. And another one that's pretty obvious and that a lot of people do is uh, Timurma Hold Rep, which gives you access to one-handed uh, 15 agility enchant and two-handed 25 agility enchant, which sells like absolute hotcakes on any server. Well, if you made it to the end of this lengthy video, you're a trooper. I hope I showed you some new information which will help you attain financial success during the launch of Classic WoW. And if you like my style of video and want to see more, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell to be notified when I post new videos. And with that being said, thanks for watching and good luck in classic. Thanks again and I'll see you on the next one.